The Vernon Lee collection came to Colby in a very kind of quirky way. When Vernon Lee died, the executor of the estate, who was named Irene Cooper Willis, at a Thomas Hardy conference, she met Carl Weber, who was then the director of special collections at Colby. And Vernon Lee was always afraid that her papers would be destroyed by war because Vernon Lee had lived very traumatically through World War I. And Irene Cooper Willis, through the persuasiveness of Carl Weber, was convinced that this was definitely a safe place. So she gave all the rest of the correspondence um, to Colby. And there was a restriction on when it could be opened. And um, that was in the early 1980s. And I was the first person to look at the collection after it was opened. She adopted a male pseudonym really soon after her first publications came out. The reason she did adopt that name, a pseudonym was because like many, not many, but several other prominent Victorian women writers, um, adopting a male pseudonym protected them and protected their writing from being belittled. Why do we study Vernon Lee? Why do scholars from all over the world come here to look at um, our holdings? Um, it's because she wrote a ton of things in a huge variety of areas, including economics, public policy, including psychology, including aesthetics, as well as um, creative writing. She wrote fiction, she wrote excellent non, uh, creative nonfiction essays. Also of our first walk, of which I seem to see in my mind as clearly as I can in daily reality, the hundred yards or so of the old road to Fiesole, where it ascends between steep olive yards and big black cypresses against the blue. And bells were ringing that morning. Bells are always ringing. What is also really interesting and what intrigues scholars uh, from all over the world is her collection of friends and her networks. And she was connected to some of the real stars of the late 19th, early 20th century. So some of the best Victorians and best early modernists. And she is a real key to the life of those times, and especially to the way that an intellectual woman who was very outspoken lived during those times, and how she, despite the most outlandish criticisms of her, um, how she expressed herself and, and didn't never felt intimidated. Um, and for that reason, I think she's a great example to um, to highlight when we look back on women's history.